for the union. Hello, y'all. Uh. I was selling crack on a private jet up in the hell and back. But no confusion, this a reunion. Hello, y'all. Welcome back. Get murder here. He counting money. He said, can me in the hell with rap. I'm only here to shit on niggas and piss on bitches. Welcome, man. I bought jewelry and bikes, nigga. Black Benzes and white figures. Now I'm out here and I'm looking for more chandeliers and light fixtures. Nah. I don't like niggas, what's wrong with me? I'm a high nigga, but this 44 turn to Michael Jordan. I'm looking, say, take flight, nigga. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. They'll also match your first deposit up to $100, and you get a special pick when you sign up. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Sat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. Well, what Killer, up, what's good, man? I knew strangers came in. I was smoking before I came to the show and shit. New <laughs> shit just came in, man. I'm on point, though. <laughs> what's happening? You good? <laughs> yeah. You know what's crazy? The other day when I was on, uh, when I was in Miami, and I was on Zoom with you guys, and I was smoking, a nigga told me to find out what you was smoking because you was spinning so crazy. They said, we know Cam is smoking. <laughs> but, but what is May smoking? <laughs> I recorded it. He said, he said, what's he talking about this man? I said, I said, that boy right there, you won't ever catch that nigga right there, man. That niggas, that niggas put up the post. They, they, they looped the post. Uh, when you was in the garden and you hit nigga with the spin, they had him going back. <laughs> played it like 19 times. Are <laughs> you spinning? Nigga said, killer, this what he do. <laughs> they put it back to back to back to back. Yeah, uh, shout out to Bam. They see, they got me shaking you up on, on, on live. Pause. Yo, niggas, you know, did you realize niggas is mad because our opinion on the on the beef between Drake and Kendrick Lamar, a few niggas is For upset. For real? Yeah. yeah. You know, you know what? Drum and, and Lake Lake hit me about it. Lake said, "Come on, y'all. You know Kendrick is killing that boy." And I'm like, "Yo, bro, why we can't have our opinion? <laughs> I don't get that. I, I don't really get why we can't have our opinion, man." Secondly, this is what I want to say. And, I, and, this is, and, and this is not to start a problem with anybody or anything. West Coast people. East Coast niggas is not as big on the coast shit as y'all are on the coast shit. Like, you know, niggas, like growing up, all these niggas, the West Side nigga, West Side. You don't see East Coast niggas be like, yeah, East Coast nigga. We don't. So there's niggas in the comments on a few yeah. blogs like, oh, y'all East Coast niggas. Y'all stay hating on us West Coast niggas. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, bro, you really still? It's crazy that- It's crazy because all my teams are West Coast. Right, whatever it is. But it's yeah. like, bro, I promise y'all, we are not over there talking about, hey, yo, yeah, we the East Coast. We The East Coast is wild small. Let me break down the East Coast for you. New it's, York. It's New York, Boston, <laughs> Philly. And Philly, and Connecticut. <laughs> After that, you get to Virginia, they consider they so South. You yeah. get the- Pennsylvania too, but that's Philly. After you leave Pennsylvania, the next state is Ohio. They consider themselves Midwest. Yeah, it ain't even like the East Coast is really that big. So when niggas is like, "Oh, y'all East Coast niggas hate," I'm a Kendrick Lamar fan. My favorite rap group of all time is N.W.A. Yeah, the one with Ice Cube. And mine is Tupac. Yeah, so y'all niggas gotta stop because we it's too many years y'all going on with this East Coast yeah. West Coast shit. The Vibe magazine started this shit. And fucked it up years ago when Biggie and Tupac was beefing, and they put on the cover of the magazine East verse East Coast versus West Coast, and that's what started those shit. At least in my time, time, time that I've been alive, we are not big on saying, "Oh yeah, we the East Coast fuck the West Coast," because y'all comments murder y'all, y'all West Coast, y'all East Coast niggas be y'all been hating on us, and I'm yeah. like, bro, I am not. I'm on good music. The reason why. We felt the, or I felt the way with Kendrick Lamar. The song's mm. sensational. It's dope. It's really, really good. But Mace made a great point. We waited two, three weeks for really, really good. And, I, and people was also in the comments saying like, well, this took this long and Ether took this long and this took this long. Yeah, but we in the internet era. Yeah. We in the internet era. All them songs y'all was talking about took a while. 
we can just load it up in 20 minutes and put it out. It, you can do that now. You can upload shit and put it right out. So we think Kendrick Lamar is a great rapper. We think Drake's a great rapper. It's just our opinion. Yeah. Secondly, what I'll say, last, lastly, what I'll say is this, Murder. And, and I always took this into consideration with my career, talking about musically. Mm -hmm. um, I remember 1996 and... Um, Jay Z first came out. He had the "Ain't No Nigga" with Foxy, mm -hmm. and the B side, I believe, was Dead Presidents. And Nas had two albums, I believe, at the time, if I'm not mistaken. It, it, it was written. It just came out. And I'm at this bitch house, and I'm like, "Yo, Nas is that nigga, man. Nas is that nigga." Now, mind you, Jay Z don't have an album out of nothing. It's yeah. kind of new. So she's like, "Nah, I'm fucking with Jigga." And I know Jay Z. I'm like, "They calling him Jigga now?" <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah." Okay, I was like, how you, and, and this, now don't get me wrong, Jay-Z elevated his career throughout the years, so we have to have a lot of respect for him lyrically, mm -hmm. and songs, and so on and so forth. But I'm talking about this era where Jay-Z just had a single, a, a white label out. A white yeah. label is a record with an A and B side. And she's like, Cam, I just like Jay-Z better. I'm like, how do you like Jay-Z better than Nas? And, and I never forget it, because I took it into consideration with my career. She said, Cam, when I'm out and about, or in the club, I don't feel like carrying a dictionary around with me. I just want to have fun and listen to the music. Yeah. I don't want to think too much. Now, you got songs where you think, mm. and you got songs where you just want to have fun. You know what I'm saying? Or you smoking or whatever the case may be. And when I spoke to certain people about the Kendrick Lamar record, he's like, you didn't hear this shit when he said, I'll park your son, because it's Parkinson's. And so I was like, oh, that's a good one. I didn't peep that. But you, he's dissing so-and-so, and I'm like, I didn't even know he was this and so-and-so. So, so you got to take into consideration, mm -hmm. we may not know all the aspects of what was going on in the diss battle. Anyway, I'm being a little long-winded about it. My moral is, we East Coast niggas is not on that East Coast, West Coast shit like yeah. West Coast niggas is, and we fuck with y'all niggas. But it seems like it always turns into that. We're not hating on Kendrick Lamar. I think he's de definitely top three of this generation. I'm not going to say he was one through three. But at the end of the day, we got mad love for him. But if we ask him what we want to hear, that's what we want to hear. Me personally. <laughs> <laughs> I don't speak twice. Niggas heard me the first time. <laughs> Y'all yeah. niggas heard me the first time, right? <laughs> they should have never gave this nigga mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I respect that. Yeah, I said what I said. Yeah, man. <laughs> hey, that's that. Yeah, I think that. I think they wait, and I think both of them got a record, and neither one of these are the records that they've been saying they had this whole time. I think Kendrick got something else that he's really been holding on to, and and that's what I'm really speaking to. Don't waste our time. Just just go crazy, man. Is is basically, not basically what you saying is like. They testing each other out in the first round instead of getting yeah. to the seventh round. Instead of get get to the action, man. <laughs> get to the action. Mm -hmm. Drop the song that make us look at the nigga different. That's the one we're looking for. Okay. Well, let's get into. Well, who you think won is that? I definitely think Kendrick is winning. I feel like this is making people look at Drake different because he said a lot of things, even down to the what did he? I forgot exactly what he said, but he said how many. Features till you think you black it up. Like he said a lot of things that were like, dang. And people are waiting for Drake's response still. And I still think Drake is obviously a dope artist. He's one of the best of our generation. But Kendrick is on a different level that I wouldn't want to be messing with. And even down to the credits, right? When it was looking at who wrote the song, Kendrick is labeled as the only writer. Drake had two other people. That, so I'm just seeing a lot of things. On and I'm the just song like, that he did. Yeah, there was two other, and I have to find it exactly so I can read it off to y'all. But there's two other people who were on the thing. So I'm just like, even if Kendrick does have more in the vault, I feel like it's still going to be better than what Drake put out. I'm not saying that what Drake put out isn't good because I love Drake's music, but Kendrick got that fire. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and, and the thing about it is for me, for me personally. I it, celebrate that because no, I know how I no, feel what I'm saying is for me when personally, ladies like you and niggas don't like it. So. No, what I'm saying is me personally, because they interviewed the people, women in the WNBA they, in, at draft night. They interviewed 10 females who's winning. And nine of them said Drake, and one said Kendrick. But me personally, and I know, I know personally that 
what you gonna say? I think you you wave riding. To be honest with you, Stack. This is my opinion. Me? Yeah, I'm just saying. Wave riding? If you, you wave, look back, just, just think you wave riding. If you look back, you can't back, take my opinion. It's my yeah. opinion. No, 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 no. I think you need you a surfboard sponsor. You definitely was, need a surfboard. Get a if surfboard. If I was wave riding, I would <laughs> I not. And this is not a show. If I was wave riding, I would be saying Drake because I feel like Kendrick is the one. People are like, oh, we like his lyrics, but I feel like more people are siding with Drake. Like I've listened to Kendrick since he dropped some of his first stuff. So it's like, and I mean Drake too, but it's not like I'm just like, oh yeah, like Kendrick is in the mix. Like, let me just hop on Kendrick. Like, no, his stuff is actually really good, but there's a deeper meaning to a lot of it. Like I will sit and watch the breakdowns for stuff. So I understand a lot more of like what he's trying to say. So I'm like, dang, Stats, you wasn't said this off what, the first you listen? Said one line, you said. How many songs are you gonna to do to you black enough? What else he said? He said a lot of things. Then he said stuff about you don't know how to how to raise a child. Then he said he's not messing with real woman, meaning like he well, that's a different conversation. Um he said a lot of things about Drake what was specifically. That can I say about something about real can I, woman? Yeah, yeah I, that's a good point, Cine. I, I heard all that too, but can I say something? Yes. And this is no diss. No yeah. diss whatsoever towards mm -hmm. Kendrick Martin. Not even a little bit, because I don't I don't got time. I don't I don't want to du double back in my life. I'm in a good space. <laughs> I don't want no problem. <laughs> Kendrick Lamar wife is half white. She's Cam, mad. Don't she's say light that. She's light skinned. <laughs> yeah, and don't say I'm, that. I'm saying, if you're accusing Drake, and I'm not taking some, just stating facts. If you're accusing Drake of being half white, and your wife, and you're using all this black card, your wife is half white. So how are you attacking the man about something you're dealing with? And I don't care about my size. I'm just saying if you're going to use the black card, if that's what we're doing. I'm just saying. Now you didn't. Cam, giving, Cam is giving Drake ammo now. No, no this is on the internet. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I ain't giving nobody no ammo. I don't want no problems, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in a good space in life. Yeah, I'm in a Cam good space is in life. giving Drake ammo. You, you knew that? Yeah. That he had a white wife? Uh, uh, half white or half white i didn't i didn't know that i, confirmed, I knew but. all this stuff on you both that, sides no, i didn't yeah, know that yeah I just, I, I just found this out like two days ago. i didn't know that i knew, that I knew stuff on both sides yeah. I, and listen but listen. i ain't i ain't in it yeah and kendrick lamar listen that nigga is very entertainment and lyrical and i think mm -hmm. the reason why uh we me and mace myself yesterday was holding him to a high standard is because he's one of them niggas he spits you know yeah. what i'm saying and Maybe it was just a lot to digest for me, but when I was speaking to one of my friends and he was breaking it down, I'm like, I wouldn't have understood that anyway because I didn't know that's who he was talking about. It was like mm -hmm. little in-between shit. So I guess the people that know everything that's going on, it's like, nah, you ain't get it. <laughs> my bad. Okay. Well, let us know what you guys think in the comments because I'm sure everybody got a lot to say. Great started the discussion yeah and don't but. put us in it yeah. <laughs> Pause. we're not in it yeah it's and it's mad niggas who commenting on this yeah <laughs> we're just like we're just another show i had talking niggas about. calling me all morning ask me he's hip-hop you ask him <laughs> i got r&b niggas calling me i got executives mace what do you think i said bro i can't even tell y'all what i said it made me think i need a hip-hop show yeah, it might just be. Just breaking down raps. Everybody wants to know what y'all have to say. Like, that's why it's like, the sources, we got to know from yeah, Cam and Yeah, nigga, know nigga, nigga, nigga yeah. told us we on Drake payroll all type of shit. That's yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Cam, right. why not? Okay, so let's get into it. Ryan Garcia tested positive for a banned performance-enhancing drug the day before and the day of his fight against Devin Haney. Ryan claims he's never been a cheater. He said, I've never taken a steroid. I don't even know where to get steroids. So does this change things for you? Wait, wait. He tested positive the day before the fight? And the day of. And the day of. Mm -hmm. I told y'all he was moving funny. I did say that. I said, I don't know what he was on, but he's on pause something. He was just too jittery and too, too you know, just too everything. <laughs> and I, I think this is perfect for Bill Haney. Bill, if you're watching this, you got to come up to the show. You got to clear your name because they've been talking crazy. But what happens if you get if you get knocked out, but the nigga was on steroids? Where does that put where does that put the fighters? Does he take this loss off his record? Like, where does this put him? Because it doesn't erase the Internet. The Internet still think you got you got um, Paul's man handled. Right. But 
Man, this is crazy. I guess this is what Floyd was talking about all these years, killer, when he said he won Olympic style testing because niggas be playing with your health. Paul's out there fighting and and niggas be juiced up, man. This is crazy. This is good news for Devin, though. Great news for Devin. As long as they take the loss off his record. <clears throat> That's what I was about to ask you. Do you take the loss off? Yeah, you got to take the loss off. It like like you were saying earlier before we we got to this point. It remind me of Cotto and Margarito, where niggas just pause, hitting dumb hard, and you find out this thing got cement in his gloves. It's <laughs> like it's a fact. Yo, I, I but in this case, I don't know if he fights him again. If but he, you say he got to fight him again. I right? wouldn't. I wouldn't say you have to. But I, when we when we was talking about before the show started, we was talking about. How Kodo went back and fought him again. Yeah. To prove to, to me, it was more about Kodo's his feel like, ego. I, yeah, his ego. Like, I know a nigga ain't I know like, a nigga ain't make me take a knee. Yeah, because he like, I knew something wasn't right. Yeah. I ain't one of them niggas. Yeah. I ain't take a knee ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? So I think it was more about Kodo proving to himself that I knew this nigga can't beat me. I don't know if Devin wants that same uh, fight because you made a great point. Now I can't trust you. <laughs> yeah, this nigga get coked up again. It's gonna be real bad. It's gonna be real bad because yeah. now he ain't got nothing to lose. Yeah, because now what happens is, and then you might be suspended two, three years. I don't know what the suspension is. If you do it again, and the same result happens, and then we waiting for a drug test three weeks, two, three weeks later, you like. Tested again positive. Now it's like, bro, you got to get out the sport <laughs> because you just don't care. Now, mind you, murder, I don't know what the fine will be. I don't know how much it, how this works um, on the, on the um, inside the boxing commission or so to speak, if I'm using the wrong terms. But this man still made 50 million or he said self-proclaimed 50 million, but you made millions of dollars. Yeah. How does that work? <laughs> and how does it work with the betting right for the people who bet it and right. made that money and that's like, a, that's even better that's question. That's a great question. How much money do I get back if if you if you already won 10 12 million 15 million betting on yourself? Right. Do you have to pay that money back if we find out you cheated? That's wow. That's wow. That's crazy. That is nuts, and I'm I'm just thinking about how Bill got to feel right now. Bill Bill probably feel vindicated. <laughs> yeah, Bill, <laughs> this is how, Bill feel like he yeah. Drake right now. Yeah, All yeah, these niggas think, ganging up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bill Bill probably feel vindicated <laughs> because at the end of yeah, the, let's go, Bill. Yeah, because you got to realize at the end of the day, Bill is like, I knew niggas wasn't fucking with us on some on regular time, and I love Bill because even Bill with the loss, he gonna talk. But oh my god, right now, yeah, Bill said I invited the nigga to a murder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, maybe that was the problem, Mace. I invited him to a homicide. Yeah. <laughs> he took it the wrong way. Maybe that's what happened. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but I didn't look at that point till you just mentioned it. The gambling got to. I won't. I, I don't even know. How, it's too late, but. I would be knocking on somebody's door. Yeah, they <laughs> definitely got to vindicate the win. I don't know if it's a non-contest, non-contest, or or move. They definitely got to move the one off of Devin's um, record. And um, with Ryan, this is this is it, it. Just put a damper on everything that he did, you know, because now it's not you that did it. You was you was actually illegally in the ring. He was on that he man. Yeah, he was on that. <laughs> he was, he was, he was on, on that, that. Tikal. Like, you know when nigga. niggas used to be dusted back in the hood, you yeah. you knock that nigga yeah. out, he get right up. Sometimes they don't fall, they just talk yeah. to you. I remember it was a dust head, he was acting crazy. And niggas jumped him, and he's like, why y'all hitting me? <laughs> 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 niggas, niggas' hands is hurting all type of shit. He wasn't going, niggas said, yo, why y'all keep hitting me? Man? I said, I ain't going to wake up. Fucked Yo, up, it's crazy. Word. But yeah, Bill, we're looking forward to have you back and see what you got to say because this is this is extraordinary news. And, so, and lastly, for me, I don't understand. I don't know if it costs more money. I don't under I don't know what the problem is, 
But boxing, no matter what, to yeah. me, no matter what, should have the same rules or test that Floyd requires for his fights, the Olympic yeah, drug test. Yeah, the Olympic test. Why, why don't every fight have that particular testing? Secondly, why is it taking two weeks to find out this nigga tested positive yeah. for PD? Like, the, this remind me of a cold case murder. Yeah. When you watch the first 48 or some shit like that. the first 48. Yeah, but then you know how you be having the cold case, you be like, oh, we got master DNA, it's going to take a while, this, that, mm -hmm. that. Yo, bro, it's boxing. Ain't that many important fights going on. Do the Olympic style testing and then you won't have to go through this. Secondly, real quick before we move on. Did you think Bernard, them, Bernard and, and De La Hoya knew that he was on something? I think if you knew, they knew. Because <laughs> <laughs> I knew. Yeah. I, I've I been thought, around niggas high my whole life. I know what it looks like. Yeah, yeah that, <laughs> that nigga, I think they knew. But at the end of the day, they was like, the fight is booked. The money's being made, et cetera, et cetera. But... Um, yeah, it's nothing you could do about it at this point. Get get a man his victory back. Do he want to fight you again? Cool. I'm not sure. Speaking of drugs and everything else, I want to play a clip real quick between, did you see Oscar De La Hoya and, and um, oh. my redhead pause, redhead nigga, man. Co Canelo, Canelo Alvarez. Yeah. Did you see it? Let's go to this clip real quick. Thank you very much uh, for being here for what I truly believe will be the changing of the guard of Mexican boxing from Canelo Alvarez to Jaime Munguia. My sole purpose in this promotion is to support Jaime, an undefeated incredible talent who deserves a stage and spotlight at this point of his career. However, I would be remiss if I didn't respond to the man I used to promote. He seems to have trouble remembering who helped him become a true global star. To be clear, I have nothing but respect for Canelo. Alvarez as a fighter, his record and abilities speak for themselves. But he has spent much of the last two months insulting me rather than promoting this fight. So I'll make it a little bit easier for him. Yes, I have faced a lot of challenges in my life. Yes, I've been to rehab several times. Yes. There were some really low points in my life, and yes, there were times that work was not my priority based on my mental health, which I had neglected for so long. But that doesn't change the fact that Golden Boy built Canelo Alvarez, period. The company you fought under for, for, for decades has always had one name, and it's mine. So put some fucking respect on it. As for Jaime, he has always dared to be great just as he's this Saturday night. And this serves as a bit of a full circle for him. Remember when Jaime was 21 years old, volunteered to step in against Triple G, and Canelo failed two drug tests? Though Jaime wasn't allowed to fulfill his dream, 2018, on Saturday night, he will do just that, fulfill his dream and be world champion. All right, let's have everyone take a beat a little bit and we will move on with our show so <laughs> <laughs> everybody beefing everywhere it's, it's beef, beef all everywhere. over the world man. yo <laughs> you know it's what it's beef everywhere and there's drugs in the beef pause yeah, pause that's a fact <laughs> cuz you know why i like canelo alvarez until he got caught failing the drug test and you know, here we go again. Sin, Sin Tobias in it, <laughs> said it was in his food. It ain't his he fault. He said it was in his a steak. steak. Yeah, yeah. All right, bro. <laughs> PD steak is wild, <laughs> B. <laughs> but my thing is, Oscar De La Hoya said he failed two drug tests. Yeah. I knew about one. I didn't know about two. But Oscar, if you knew this, it was good when it, he was fucking with you. 
you ain't care about yeah. letting them niggas know about him failing the drug test. Now you don't fuck with him. So you putting it out there that he failed two drug tests that you were obviously cool with. That's fucked up too as a yeah. promoter. You know what I'm saying? And so, this Ryan thing becomes three drug tests under yeah, Golden Boy. Exactly. So that's why I wanted to go to that clip really mm -hmm. quick because I'm like, that's a great point, Murder. These drug tests is all under <laughs> Golden Boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. But yeah, Oscar said, put some fucking respect on his name. Stop acting crazy, man. And uh, I just wanted to show that clip because we was talking about cheaters and drug drug test failures. Mm -hmm. And to make a great point, Mace, is that that is a great point. They were all under Golden Boy, at least the ones that we're talking about yeah. today. Who's getting them these drugs? I don't know because remember, Ryan said a shit that I said, and I'm like, I and I don't believe Ryan, but I'm just saying, I wouldn't even know where to go to get steroids. I know Nick fights in UFC gyms, and I said, Nick, you know where to get steroids from? And he said, yeah. So I'm like, if you ever <laughs> need to get steroids, I guess we would ask Nick, but I don't want steroids. Like, how do you how do you negotiate a steroid deal? How does that work? Like, yo, you know, don't go crazy. <laughs> don't go crazy with the steroids, nigga. A sap, or is it pills or whatever? I always been scared of steroids. I'm not saying I would ever cheat the game when I was playing sports or anything, but I heard and, and super super duper pause. Yeah. I don't want my shit shriveling up. Or you get a shrivel with it. <laughs> I'm like, they said I'm holding. I don't pause. I got fine for that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying that's just me personally. That's how important the nigga steroids is. Nigga rather do this. Damn. Long stroke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking a long stroke pause, me personally. Showing your thigh muscles off in bikinis. <laughs> yeah. I ain't with all that. Your brother's arms be big. <laughs> Oh shit, man! Yeah, I just yeah. wanted to bring that up. So I said, "No, we're all good." Um, I do have another question before we move on to the next. So basically, <clears throat> how do you guys feel about Tank basically sticking up for Ryan? There's a tweet where he said they doing anything to take away the win from Ryan. If that's the case, ban ban Eddie Hearn, Silver Poon ass, and that's deleted. And then somebody else asked him, "How does PEDs affect your ability to see a punch coming?" Devin was getting cooked. Then he said, with the same punch over and over again, didn't make no adjustments. Well, the thing about the thing about the drug is that your a is a perform performance enhancer. Pause. So that means your performance is enhanced. Is it, 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 that simple? People be wanting things to be so complicated. If you show up where punches really can't hurt you like they would. And it gives you speed and it gives you energy that you wouldn't have. It's like Barry Bonds and them when they start getting home runs every time they go to the plate. And you getting home runs without PDs, you definitely gonna feel away. I used to feel the same way about rap, niggas is cheating. <laughs> so I feel the same way he feels. Yeah, um, I think me personally, I think that. Tank is doing a good thing because I feel that he feels a lot of niggas is turning their back on Devin and jumping on the Ryan Garcia train. And he like, yo, fuck out of here. Cause you gotta realize there's the little circle, Shakur, Devin, Tank, all these, you know, they was the undefeated fighters that wanna mm -hmm. fuck with each other. And then it comes out, Floyd is giving Ryan advice, leaking footage. Well, he's actually sticking up for Ryan. Who? Um, Tank. Because he basically oh, said, bad. yeah, he said, I don't like you, Devin, and the rest of y'all. And then he said they're doing anything to take away the win from Ryan. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. My bad. Yeah. I apologize. Um, well, let me rephrase that because I, I misunderstood what Scott yeah, was saying. Yeah, that's that. Um, I don't fucking know, man. To be honest with <laughs> you, so, that weight division is a fucking mess. Yeah. You know, I thought that, you know, being that I misunderstood the with the quote, I was saying because... Uh, Floyd was fucking with Ryan that he was taking Devin's side like everybody's leaving him out to dry. I think now that I'm hearing it correctly that he's like, 
Now niggas want to take away a win from Devin because he beat him, but I beat him. Yeah. So I don't even need to fight him <laughs> if you can't beat yeah, him. Yeah, that's what I was really <laughs> thinking about. I think this loss messed a lot of money up yeah, for Javante. But with this PED thing, it could, it could we could resurface yeah. and talk about a few things. But I would want I would want to fight if I was Javante. I would want to fight Dev with, um, without the loss and. I wouldn't want him to lose to Ryan so I can keep a, oh, I, I will want my skills to be tested against whoever they say is the best. I wouldn't want to, like, not that he's ducking that, but I wouldn't I wouldn't want that. Yeah, I'm not sure. This shit is a mess, man. This shit is it's, it's one big mess. Yeah. And uh, this PED shit didn't help clean up any of it. Is that okay? And then the Mavs beat the Clippers 123 to 93 to lead the series right now. Clippers are trying to put up a fight, but do you think they have what it takes to beat the Mavs this next game? You kill them. Game I seen tonight, no. You know, this series for real. Is, this, this series goes back and forth, up and down, up and down, but it's seeming like uh I'll, I'll take a fucking page out of this nigga book over here. They're, nah. they're jealous. This <laughs> they're, they're jealous. This starting to yeah. jealous. <laughs> I told you this, killer. I said it's possible for two things no, to be right. You said at the, the Clippers time. was starting to gel. That's what you said was jelling, nigga. You said the Clippers was jelling. You didn't say that the Mavericks was jelling. I think the Mavericks are jelling and not the Clippers. So that's my opinion. But listen, yeah. this, seriously, this this series is a game to game situation because as good as the Mavs looked last night, uh, you'll come out and get a spectacular performance from from uh. Paul George and, and James Harden last night, I'm sitting there watching the game and I'm like, me and Larry are watching this shit and, and, and it, I think he's on a 13-0 run during the time we watched. And yeah. we was like, yo, what the fuck are they doing? But what I will give credit to is Jason Kidd and not only Jason Kidd because you got to get the players to buy in. Dallas this season was not a really good defensive team. This series, you have seen them step up defensively in this, since the playoffs have started. And I'm saying, you got to buy into that because a lot of people don't like to buy into defense. But I was really great and took pride in playing defense. And today, you just see a nigga go by you and you're like, all right, my man back there, Paul, he should, he should catch you. It should be all right. Mm -hmm. But this series, you see the de same thing with the Knicks as well. You see the defensive tenacity and got players to buy in. And last night, it was a, it was a really, really good performance from Luka. He had 35 points. I think me and Larry watched the stretch where he scored 12 straight, something like that. Uh, Kyrie deferred. That's what I do like about their relationship. Whoever got it going or if they both got it going, they tell. You could tell. So, like, mm -hmm. even Kyrie was like, yo, come get it, Luca. You you hot tonight. And he deferred. And it was just it was just a cool game to watch, but it really wasn't, since the second quarter, it really wasn't that competitive Watching them, you're not going to win with Paul George with 15 points. You're not going to. James Harden had seven. Yes, bro. you're not going to win with James Harden with seven points. Um, Russell with Ru Russell Westbrook with six points. It's not going to happen. Paul George on the court minus 16. James Harden on the court minus 25. Makes it. so that means when he, when James Harden was on the court last night, you're at minus 25 points. <laughs> When you, when, yeah, when he's I was on the saying court. this, right, Stat? I was saying this. Was I not? And you said it normally happens in the in the Western Finals. I, I did say this, Killer. You said the Clippers were gelling, man. I said that, that's James what you said. Harden. Did I not? Did you did, I, did, you I, did say that, but you oh. also said... You, it's, it's two things for me to be right at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> you he said that James Harden is <laughs> not doing what he's supposed to do, on. but you also <laughs> said the Clippers <laughs> were jelling. So two things could be right <laughs> at the same time. I'm going to so, go with that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, yeah. but you, Dallas, yo, the nigga has seven, like yo. You can't mm -hmm. be having those seven in a – 
in a game that's going to decide who goes ahead in this series. This is not the time to be, be going through these these crises. Yeah. Who do you think wins the series, though, now that Dallas is up 3-2? to two? Um, Dallas, I said that. Did actually say I that. did say that. That's what I'm talking about. How you say <laughs> Dallas, but Clippers is jealous. Which one? Is- <laughs> That's why I said no it, these two things can be right at the same time. So I was able to say it. You said it. Now I'm giving you pause back what you said to me. Dancing, dancing, dancing. <laughs> dun, dun, He's a dun, dancing dun, machine. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga murders a dancing machine. Do, 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 do. Yeah, nigga, keep it up. Keep going. <laughs> you never move. <laughs> He's a dancing machine. <laughs> Bro, keep yeah. going, nigga. <laughs> Keep dancing, nigga. <laughs> and you got your hype girl right here with you. You did say that. No. I actually yeah. did, though. Yeah. Like, even before yeah. when he made Go the on. picks, he was like, I'm going with the Mavs. That's, why my, that's my people out there. Even though you have a lot of people. But he did <laughs> say that was his people. People so. is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Stay, stay strong, Stay. I am. Stay I'm strong. Okay. Any final thoughts before we go to break? No, nah, I think this, to me, this, this I'm really... uh. I'm waiting on the, the night's game, to be honest yeah. with you. This has been the most interesting series, the 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 Sixers and the Knicks. I do got my own question, though, real quick before we go to yeah. break. And I was thinking about this, right? Jalen Brunson, the last three months, has been arguably playing just as good as anybody, if not the best player in the league. Mm-hmm. Definitely top three, four, five, if not, depending on which your, your – uh, preference of basketball do you think and I'm just saying if Philly wins tonight and we'll see what happens if it's a game Mm. seven if it's a game seven I know where you're going if Tyrese Maxey stole everything he worked for the last three months last game and said thank you and put it in his pocket because let me tell you something the way I looked at that <clears throat> when I was going back watching the game again last night, and I watched a little, you know, I taped it, I watched it again because it was a fucking exciting game. Knicks are up six points with 28 seconds to go. You, how do you lose that, bro? You, Josh Hart's missed the free throw. Mitchell fucking hit, gives him a foul on a three-point M1. And, you know, a lot of people will say the Knicks gave that game away. Philly didn't win it. But you have to make the shots off New York's era. So New mm-hmm. York, I say it's 50-50. New York kind of gave it away, but you have to hit a three-point if it goes. Mm-hmm. You have to hit the shot from the logo. So at the end of the day, Tyree, they gave an opportunity for Tyrese Maxey to be great. If that series ended the other night uh, with the Knicks winning, Jalen Brunson was at superstardom. <laughs> he's not saying he's he right. He's a super. He's, He's a st- all star right now, but he's right here from yeah. superstardom. And if the Knicks don't win this series, Tyrese Maxey, I'm asking you, this is my question. Did he snatch that moment away from Jalen Brunson from being a superstar? That now we have to put him back here uh, because you got to think about this. Even though Jalen Brunson finished with 40 points and everything, he. Knicks took 10 shots in overtime. He shot eight of them. He's shooting the ball. You caused the key turnover to actually lose the game at the end when you're trying to pass to the center. What do you think about if the Knicks don't win this series about Jalen Brunson and Tyrese Maxey and Jalen Brunson superstar? If the Knicks doesn't win this, Jalen Brunson becomes like, until next season, like Jeremy Lin. You gonna throw Jeremy Lin on a nigga? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> That's how quick New Yorkers switch they, up. They on will. You. They will. Though. I'm not saying what I think. That's what, how New York is. They, they will. You was right here, and now it's like, yo, I told you the nigga was just. He was on a hot. Seat. It lasted longer than I thought. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Niggas in New York, York would switch. Yeah, like quick. That. He ain't lying about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, yes, Tyrese Maxey has snatched everything that he worked for. Yeah. 
I mean, because this is your position. It's not yeah, like yeah. a nigga is that taller than you. This yeah. is your position. Mm -hmm. The guy that we moved out of New York for you to be in New York. So you got you can't lose that. Yeah, I was wondering that because it looks like as much hype trade as Jalen Brunson has been getting, and rightfully so. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Tyrese Maxey came and took it. Like, you know, it's a slogan that says, uh, reputations take years to build. And, and, a second. and the second to lose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and this is what it kind of what it feels like. Yeah. Yo, this, this so minute. that's exactly what I'm saying. All that that he's done, if you let Tyrese Maxey bring this game back to New York for a game seven and win it on your floor, there is no other way to look at it. You were up 3-1, and I decided that you're not going to win the series. Is nobody else decided that. Tyrese Maxey decided that. From the 40 points to the other game, it's like somewhere in there he decided that Joel Embiid is not going to do this. I'm going to do it. Yeah, even if you look at that three-point if it goes, because I dissected the game when I watched it, it was a pick and roll between him and Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid rolled to the basket. Jalen Brunson was the only nigga under the basket with him. He could have gave it to Jalen yeah. Brunson, I mean to Joel Embiid, and that could have been a definite two points. But even though Joel Embiid had nine turnovers, and you defer, you like to defer to the star on the team, yeah. but it's something that Clicker say, yeah. this ain't going to get us here. And I seen that in Tyrese <laughs> Maxey. So yeah. I'm telling you right now. Three point, if it's yeah, three look, point and one is yeah, like, yeah, nigga. Then, <laughs> yeah, then over the logo, at the logo. Look, I'm telling you this, Jalen Brunson. I don't know. I know you from Jersey. I don't know how much time you spent in New York. These niggas will turn on you, bro. Yeah. They, yo, these niggas, these niggas will turn on you, the my nigga. The same niggas. <laughs> yeah. They the will same turn. Niggas don't let this like, happen, bro. Yeah. <laughs> because you know why? Now everything would be Tyrese Maxey until yeah. next year, bro. I'm telling you this. These niggas have no loyalty. They act like they, they're, they're your friend, and then they don't know you tomorrow. Don't let this happen because it'll be a bad summer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, have that nigga in the Jeremy Lin bag, I'm telling you, until next season. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go to break, and when we return, we will discuss Miami's elimination from the playoffs. <laughs> She called this thing about toxic Four years and counting Got you feeling like an option Maybe I'm my own problem, babe She tired of hearing I don't know My stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh Dealing with this thing called trust But she really thinking about She wanna be free Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day. Tonight, the Knicks will play the Sixers. Underdog fantasy has Joel and beat at seven and a half first quarter points. Do you have them higher or lower, Mace? Mm. That's a good one. I'm going higher. Pause. Going higher, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tyrese Maxey's at 39 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Do you have them higher or lower, Cam? What's the number? 39 and a half. They got some good ones on Underdog today, man. <laughs> underdog trying to do it. I... Pause. <laughs> Damn, you said a lot earlier. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Stat, Stat. <laughs> you want Melly? You want W Melly now? Okay, okay, I get it. <laughs> Y and W stat. I see where y'all going with it. Get a new nickname every week. Yeah. <laughs> Underdog trying to do it. <laughs> I'm going to go higher. I'm going to go higher. Yeah. Okay. No, nah, Mason ain't go yet. Yeah. Um, Higher. Okay. And Jalen Brunson's at 33 and a half points. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? Higher. 
Yo, he's gonna some, have to get some really good ones tonight. He's man. gonna have to get more than thirty three to win. The reason why this is really good is because I feel me personally, and I'm not sure that this is the game plan for the Knicks. Tom Thibodeau or what's in Jalen Brunson mind? Jalen Brunson might feel what you just said. For us to win, this we gotta go on. Yeah. But at the same time, when you're in the zone, it's cool to heat check and check that you're in the zone, but you don't want to leave other players out to where they don't feel like they're involved at all. Yeah. And I think that for the Knicks to win, Jalen Brunson at least 30. I don't know if he needs 40, but you have to get DiVincenzo involved, um, Hart involved. These players are good. And McBride, when, right. he, when he plays well, they definitely Right. Win. So I think that he'll think about this and try and get them going earlier. I feel that he'll have about 30. So I'm going to go lower. All right. Download the Underdog Fantasy app and you can make your picks too. So the Celtics smoked the Miami Heat 118 to 84. You was about to say your Miami Heat. Go no, ahead. I was not. Go ahead. Roof, <laughs> <To> roof, <laughs> roof. YNW stat. <laughs> to eliminate the Heat from the playoff spots on the game. Stat. Is it YMW stat or is it um Is it Lambo stat? Is it stat baby? What's the, stat what's woman? the group in, in Jacksonville? <laughs> what's the groups? Uh, listen, for for the record, I don't got nothing to do with <laughs> none of these initials he's talking about. That's not me. I'm not naming nobody none of that. I don't know what's going on. And I'm not saying those letters. So I'm just you, that's Fair. him. That's those two. With that. I don't want nobody coming down to about what's all that you was talking about. Listen, I don't have nothing to do with them letters. You're right, you're right I'm with just that. telling you. I'm just, I got I to gotta protect myself at this point. Everybody, yeah. <laughs> that's on the game. <laughs> um. I mean, we knew Miami was going to lose. They didn't have their players. They didn't have Jimmy Butler. They didn't have um. They didn't have Rosier. They didn't have Mama Rosier at the at the game. Of course, they were going to lose. And Tyler Hero, I mean, he play. He play. He he can't do it by himself, bro. They needed Duncan. They was missing three people. It was, it was no way they were supposed to beat um the Celtics. And I know, but this um, what you call it? Holiday better start playing better. They're not going. They're not going to win no championship with Holiday getting ten points. Something got to be lit. Pause under Holiday, and they need Porzingis back. But even if they don't have Porzingis, they need Holiday again to get more than ten. But White is coming into his own as a as a player coming out of a I think it's D three or D two. He's he's looking he's looking like really solid on that team. Pause. And Batman had the most again. Just for the record. When they win. Oh, let's that go. It's our team. Um, that, that, yeah. like, they had such a big chance, guys. No, we're like, uh, I was big by that too because y'all swore they were not gonna win that next game and they did. So I will you know, I'm happy about that one because I called it. But I also said, too, what as much as I that? I said that they were going to win that next game, and they did. You guys said there is no chance, and that's exactly what happened. So I am happy about that one because I called that one. But as far as this game, yeah, like I'm optimistic. I kind of knew we weren't going to win. I even said if Tyler doesn't score over 20 points, there's no chance. We didn't even, like you said, we didn't have Jimmy. We didn't even have Jaime this time, so we weren't going to make more points offensively. Like, there's just a lot of things that was going down. I think we kind of already knew and solidified we're not winning this one. And as far as the Celtics, I mean, they are, they were the number one seed. I mean, they didn't have to do too much. Now, that's why I keep saying round two, they're going to play winner of the Cavs versus the Magic. If they don't win that, that doesn't make sense to me. I just feel like the the cards are in their favor to win. So it is what it is. Season's I, over. <laughs> oh my Larry, goodness. I'll just talk to you because I don't really want to talk to either <laughs> one of them. It's a thing called a safety net, a switch side of a fence jump. Did you just hear what? Now listen to what happens. This is what niggas say. I called that game, but I kind of knew that Celtics were going to win. So either way, you win. You, the he had, she said that he got a big chance to win this game, but then she just sit there and say, "I kind of knew the Celtics overall would win." 
Mace is sitting there talking about Batman and Robin and shit. I guess he didn't watch the game because niggas ain't playing the fourth. They smacked them niggas since second quarter. Niggas wasn't even playing in the last quarter. Even Drew Holiday, they didn't, they didn't play a lot of minutes. Played 30, 34 minutes. But they were smacking them since the game started. That shit was over. Miami shot three. What the fuck was it? Let me, it was ridiculous. Um, they three point. I say shot 10% from three. 10%, my nigga. Niggas made three, yo, man, three for 29 from three. I don't think I've seen a, a three point percentage that low in my life in the game. 10% from three. 10% is 10%, 10% is whack. Wow. But this was, this was, uh, this game, me, we started watching other shit. We started clicking back and forth watching fucking interviews and shit because them niggas smacked these niggas the whole game. And then towards the end of the game, then you make sense to play them niggas because. Them niggas, look, we knew this was going to happen. I just wanted to hear what Stat really had to say about it because she came here with the black and Amen. black and red on silk the other day after they won. Ooh. Or some silk shit like she killed it. And I was like, shit was all good just a week ago. How <laughs> things change. But it's still my team. Still my team. But it's we, we saw it coming. And y'all saw it coming too. But I have my little one. That's why I Who my didn't red. see this coming? So for us. like, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm just that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> but still, I got my little one game, and that's all. That's all that matters to me. That one game. So yeah. Okay. So a lot of discussion around Colorado right now. There's a lot of, I guess you could say, Twitter beef. That's what we'll call it. So basically, a former Colorado player talked about how Deion Sanders basically encouraged him to enter the transfer portal. And as spring practice went on, he felt like he was more in the background. He said, I was actually getting mad, like tears coming to my eyes, because, bro, you never even tried to get to know me. Shador then responded on Twitter, quoting that quote that the former teammate had said. And he said, I don't even remember him, to be honest. Bro had to be very mid at best. How do you guys feel about Shador making those comments? Even the former player, you know, speaking up against Colorado and all the comments surrounding the program right now. Homeboy says Shador told him to get in the portal. No, Dion told him to get in the portal, basically saying that he should go out <coughs> and transfer. He was upset about it. You gotta respect that. You gotta respect that. Cause he he don't have to tell you get in the portal and you just be sitting down and be benched and you confused and don't know what's going on. When Dion first got to Colorado, I'm talking about leaving uh the HBCU he was coaching that, and he had a meeting with the team players in the locker room that were already there. He told them niggas get in the portal his first day there. He said, y'all yeah. might want to get in the portal because I'm bringing my niggas. He told the quarterback. <laughs> the quarterback, yeah. Yeah, why, yeah, is, yeah, why yeah, is these niggas yeah, surprised? Yeah, we yeah, got to get better. Yeah, you saw the yeah, games. Yeah, and not only that, they won one game prior to Dion being there. So I think that's man respect, and I dig it that they, when you're young, uh, every kid that plays sports is to go professional. And you might feel you have the best chance here, the best chance there, whatever. <clears throat> Pardon me, I'm sorry. But you gotta respect if a coach is telling, telling you. Telling you get in the portal. Yeah, I'm telling you, bro. This, this, yeah, this ain't the place for you. Making sure you have a shot to yes. make the pros. Because he's saying, you, I got somebody coming, pause, right. at that position. Right, absolutely. Absolutely. So I get homeboy being upset, talking shit against Dion, but I think that's the most honest thing that you could tell a player. And listen, bro, I'm, I'm fucking a grown man right now. I hear that at 20, 21, I got an attitude too. I do. I do. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to hold you. I got one of them. Larry <laughs> just pointed at you. What? Because the way you said it with no common, no comma, say? no pause, no nothing. <laughs> that was, what did he that say? That was crazy. What did he no, say? Stop. I missed it. My thing is this. My thing what did is, he say? My thing is this. What did he say? No, the whole thing is this, right, Murder? It's Kim, fine. Can you let them talk? No, no, I don't problem. know what they said. I don't know what I said neither, but I must say something. The thing is. No, it was crazy. The thing about it is. All right, no problem. What did he say? 
If you want Very. to place that, get it. You, say, you just said, you just said, no, I saw, you just said, I saw it. You just said, I saw it coming. It doesn't yeah. even work. You said, no, 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 Larry it pointed at it you. Creme de la creme Larry at the pointed. top. It, <laughs> like, it was crazy. That's 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 you. <laughs> what did he say? Woo! He said, I'm fucking a grown man right now, but you didn't stop anything. Oh, like, you was just saying, <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, <that's Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. No, when I looked over, when I looked over at Mace, I seen Nick in the background like, yeah. I said, yeah. I yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was bad, man. That was wild. <laughs> That was, yeah, that was but you know what? No problem, because the, <laughs> the pettiest of petty will be out for every, for everybody. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> no problem. No problem, bro. Y'all caught me. Y'all caught me. But this show will. I'm telling you now. This show will never finish starting tomorrow. This show will be three hours. I'm telling you right right now. I'm telling you right now. This show will be three hours. So our viewers, real quick for me, Kim. They caught me slipping. I accept it. Nothing slides pause from no man, woman, or child. Not a problem. Not a problem. Because Stat says man shit every day, and I'm like, she's from Tampa. She don't really get it. But not a problem. The show will never end. I'm oh, you this my day. goodness. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. That's a good one. Yeah. That was a good one, man. But at the end of the day, if I'm Dion, like I said, y'all call me, but I'll be, if I'm 21, I'm mad too, Bri. I don't want to hear that from my coach to get out of here. Murder. My bad. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I think um, when it, when it, I don't even. <laughs> 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 yeah, he, he did a, pause, he did him a favor because not only would it been benching him, it could mess up his NIL money. So, you know, he, he gave him a chance to get his money somewhere else. Pause. Yeah, I mean, I, to I totally agree. I mean, not saying that the player wasn't good, but it's like when a coach tells you some stuff like that, you just got to accept it and either try a new situation. And that's when you take that energy and you prove him wrong or you still prove that you have a space there at that yeah. program. I don't think that's the time to just be going and doing interviews and blasting the program because then – you know, other people are watching you. You got, you know, attention, but it might be bad attention because then, you know, when it comes down to like draft time, other teams are seeing like, okay, when you're upset about something, what's you're your gonna character go, like? Yeah, yeah, you're gonna go and chat. So I just feel like that would have just better been better off just keeping it to yourself, moving on to the next program, and then showing, you know, how good of a player you are. But on Shador's side, saying that I don't even remember him, bro had to be very mid at best. That was also. Not necessary to say. I would have kept that definitely to myself because you, you know, being the quarterback, you should know your your teammates. So acting like, you know, he ain't shit anyways, it's just kind of like, damn, like that kind of proves the point that nobody got to know him. So I just felt like that was unnecessary. But yeah. He was protecting his dad and protecting yeah. the program as he should. Yeah. 53 niggas on the team. You got to know everybody's name and shit. That says a lot of people to remember. Especially if you're not really on the same offense or special teams or defense pause, whatever. Like, 53 niggas is a lot of niggas pause to remember. Which it is. But also, it's like we sit up here and talk about multiple teams and, like, player. Like, we know a lot of people, too. I feel like your own teammates that you're training with every day, like, you should at least. You know, and even if you don't, like, you you know bro's face. Like, I just feel like to go on Twitter and blast You're like supposed that. to know the people. Yeah, the like, I just feel like that, you know. I think... To be honest with you, I think that was a very honest answer. Yeah. Like, he could have lied and been like, I know the nigga. <laughs> he could have been like, yeah, I know that nigga. He wasn't doing that nigga. Like, who? I guess he was mid. Poor. So I don't really even know if I remember this nigga face. I thought that was a brutally honest answer. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you may not pause. You may not know the people on your team because they, they joined the practice squad or something like that. And they, you don't know those people. 
Okay, well, let us know what you guys think in the comments about the whole situation. But that's all the time that we have for today. Thanks for watching. And as always, it is what it is. What you want, nigga? Everything, nigga, super size. Two Big Macs. Like when they doing them two for five.